Oh, cool. I can see myself on Facebook. That's great. I'm just going to pull that up so I can see all these questions. Perfect. Awesome. Cool. So what's up, everybody? I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds forever for this to fill in. Um, and yeah, then we'll get started. Cool. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to my live stream. Uh, my name's Jacob Umansky, and I play for a band called Intervals. Uh, basically, what we're going to do today is I'm going to go over a couple of songs from our record. And after each song, I'm just going to go over some different techniques that I use, different approaches to baseline composition. And then, um, yeah, I'll answer some questions from the Facebook stream. Um, and I also have a bunch of questions from Instagram. So in between songs, we'll just go over some questions, um, different techniques. And yeah, should be a very chill 45 minutes to an hour. So again, thank you to Dingwall for having me. And thank you uh, to you guys for being here. And um, yeah, let's get started. So this song is called 5HTP. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Jake Bumansky. Again, this is my uh, live stream masterclass. <laughs> and basically what we're going to be going over today is I'm going to be covering a couple of inter interval songs off the new record. And after each song, like this one, I'm just going to cover some different techniques that I use and different approaches to baseline composition. And yeah, so again, that song was called 5HTP. 
And so we're, let's just go over a couple of sections from that song. Uh, the first one I think would be that would be cool to go over is this uh, little fill. <laughs> So with this section, what I thought would be cool is that like it's the the first song off the record. It's like the first verse and it kind of builds in a really cool way where like it starts off with just the, the guitar speaking. And then the as the second half happens, the drums get a little bit more um, involved. And so right during this fill right here. So I kind of piggyback off the end of Nathan's fill there and then I go full on like snap happy here. So the techniques I'm using there um, obviously are slap bass um, and double thumbing. So for the first fill, it sounds like this. Um, and what I'm doing there is you have the double thumb, right? And then you have, um, which is basically I'm utilizing open strings and also doing this technique where you pop the string or you pop one note and then you slap that same note. So you go like, so. So you get this really cool, like, kind of stuttery effect. And um, on this last one, what I'm doing is I'm, is I'm more so utilizing the open strings. There's no double thumbing because I know, like, a lot of the times, actually, when people think, like, oh, that's a really fast bass fill, there must be double thumbing. There's absolutely no double thumbing in that fill at all. It's a lot of utilizing open strings, like I said. So what I mean by that is we have... So... A cool way to approach that is like, think about the, the key of the song, right? So we're in um, G minor, right? So when I'm slapping the, the open D and the A here, so, so I just think, okay, my A is the fifth, and I mean, I'm sorry, my D is um, the fifth, and my A is the ninth. So you got this cool like, and it's a really cool way to like, like write fills and compose bass lines because it kind of helps you navigate into places that you really wouldn't think of before like let's say we're in e or right so we have that g d and a so if we're in e minor we have the g which is the third d which is the seventh and a which is the fourth right so i think that's a really cool technique that i use a lot on the record um and you'll see that a couple more times throughout the throughout this um so yeah there's not too much in 5 htp that i want to cover um Maybe this breakdown would be really cool. So we have this uh, breakdown. Breakdown, I mean, it's progressive guitar music. I don't know if you would call it a breakdown. We call it a breakdown. I'll say breakdown one more time. But, um, so we have that section, right? And the section that follows it, the lead drops out. And um, like before that, I'm just mainly just following the guitars because I think that's, you know, what the section called for. Um, but now when the guitars drop, the leads drop out and it's more open and, it, you know, you can really, it's, you know, very riffy. One thing that I like to do is kind of like drop down the octave just to give the listener like, a whoa, what's going on there? Kind of a vibe. So here's what I mean by that. So in that, instead of going, you can make that. Um, and then again, it's just one of those really small things that kind of like, you know, as a bass player, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go lower than everybody else. <laughs> but it actually sounded really cool in the mix, especially when there's no leads. Um, and it's a very open, you know, riffy sounding section. Um, so that's just about it for 5HTP. Um, and if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to shoot them into the live stream. Um, and if not, I'm just going to uh, talk about some of the questions I got from Instagram, and then we're going to go on to the next track. So again, thank you all for being here. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's, get right, let's get into these. So let's see. What's a cool, what's a good one? So how do you stay consistent when practicing bass and getting better at technique? Um, well, I mean, with me, I like to... 
I live by this phrase, and I think it was like said by the, the guitar player of Nevermore, Jeff Loomis. He says, like, don't try to get too good too fast. And I think that was like a really, that's a really good like thing to live by when you're practicing bass. So what I mean by that is like, let's say you're practicing, you know, a line like, like. <laughs> So let's say you have a crazy line like that, right? So the way to approach practicing it is all one with a metronome. And um, so take it at a speed you're comfortable with, right? So just let's say we're starting at a tempo, like re a really slow one, like. Right, so let's say we build that up around 10 BPM in our practice session. And I know once you get these really advanced techniques, it can be exciting and you want to like, you know, rush to get to the next speed, but that's how you get sloppy. So I think the most important thing is like having discipline to be like, okay, I got this far today and then tomorrow I'm going to start a little slower than where I stopped today. And then I'm going to build from there. I'm not just going to like, you know, get excited and try to go faster because that's how you get sloppy and that's, you know, how you build, that's how you, you know you'll be a pretty pretty inconsistent player. So building consistency, practicing with a metronome, and having discipline, super, super important. Um, let's see, what else we got? Um, hmm. There's a bunch of really good ones. How close to the bridge do you recommend plucking? Um, it, all, it all depends on where, on the ba like, what you're playing. Like, for the interval stuff, you know, I like to, like, my sound, I almost like to emulate, like, a pick, you know, with the... <laughs> You know, so with this interval stuff, I'm pretty close to the the neck pickup or the middle, like, right. So, but again, it all depends on what you're playing. Like, if you're playing stuff like you know Jocko or like you know John Patitucci stuff, you're gonna want to play closer to, you know, the the bridge pickup, right? Or you know. So it all depends on what you're playing. But um, if you want to get a tone similar to what I'm doing, um, around the neck pickup is kind of where I'm at. All right, we'll do one more question. And um, yeah, let's see. Um, oh, I'm trying to do a short question, and a lot of these are like long answers. OK, here we go. Cool. So are we getting a circadian bass tab book? Yes, you are getting a circadian bass tab book. Um, we're working on it right now. It should be out early 2021. And um, yeah, so shameless self-promotion. <laughs> cool. Um, again, thank you guys so much for being here. And this is and a, a lot of things. Well, I mean, people know this, but this is the first time any of us in the band, well, no one has actually played these songs live yet. So this is like the first time I'm playing these songs live for anybody. So it's a pretty special experience. So I'm really stoked to be here. Um, strange uh time to be a musician or anybody really but anyway this is one of my favorite songs off the record it's called signal hill <laughs> 